conservatives fear and progressives hope that major economic contractions will lead to uh, the peasants marching with their pitchforks on Wall Street or the City of London or uh, other bastions of uh, wealth and power and, and prestige. Uh, if you look at history, however, particularly the history of the industrial world, which is only a couple of centuries old, uh, you come to a different conclusion. Uh, arguably, the Great Recession is the third of the three great depressions, if you want to use that term, that we've experienced uh, since the North Atlantic world began industrializing in the 1800s. The first depression, called the Long Depression by historians, uh, stretched from the 1870s up through the 1890s. Uh, the second uh, Great Depression, we know of as the Great Depression, a term that was initially used for the first one, and we're calling this the Great Recession. And even though we use the term recession, it, it's essentially a contained depression where we've ameliorated the worst aspects of it on the basis of uh, unemployment insurance and uh, enlightened public policy and, and uh, uh, intervention in the credit markets. Now, if you look at the previous two, the Long Depression of the late 19th century and the Great Depression of the 1930s, uh, what happened was not a great rise of populist or social democratic or progressive movements. On the contrary, you saw their defeat. Uh, the populists were absolutely defeated in the United States. Uh, what you uh, saw in North America and in Europe at the time, the industrial regions, was the rise of right-wing, imperialist, uh, nationalist, xenophobic movements, uh, eugenics, scientific racism, resegregation in the case of the United States. Uh, the 1930s depression was even worse. Uh, you saw fascism in various forms of nationalist authoritarianism replacing liberal democracy throughout Latin America and much of Europe. Uh, and even in the democracies of Europe, for example, Britain, conservatives benefited electorally, uh, not liberals. Uh, outside of the United States, with Franklin Roosevelt and the New Deal, uh, for the most part, the center left uh, suffered uh, and the center right or the far right flourished. Uh, during the Second Great Depression of recent times. Now what this suggests is that when the economy radically contracts and suddenly people realize that uh, not only are they not going to be as wealthy as they expected, but they may be poorer uh, in absolute terms, solidarity across classes, within classes, among races, among nations, uh, tends to be the first thing that goes out the window. Uh, and groups, both nations as a whole, struggling with each other, uh, and also within countries, uh, or groups based on income or ethnicity, uh, tend to rally around smaller and more parochial communities. Uh, and they want to preserve their wages, their benefits, their share of the economy, and shift the cost of adjustment to the others, whether the others are defined as, as people of making different money whether it's uh, minorities like Jews and gypsies in, in Central Europe in the 1930s uh, or African Americans and, and Latinos in the United States in that period. Uh, and so if on the basis of these two precedents, uh, I was not surprised at all when the initial reaction in the first few years after the beginning of the Great Recession was not a sudden efflorescence of liberal and populist movements, but rather uh, radical populist uh, right-wing nationalist movements, often based in the native white middle class in uh, countries of immigration, which now include Western Europe as well as uh, North America, uh, trying to defend their own uh, privileges and benefits uh, by cutting programs for others, uh, to preserve their own uh, universal welfare state programs by cutting means-tested programs for poor. It's a sad reflection on human nature, uh, but it's what our experience from previous contractions would suggest would be the political response uh, to a depression or quasi-depression.